One of the facts of American life these days is that many prescription drugs are now household names. Both doctors and the public want to reach for the newest prescription drug. You can't sit down to TV at night and not see a half a dozen drug company commercials. Millions of Americans watch the ads and then ask their doctors for prescriptions. The reason we're seeing so much consumer advertising is because it works. They do it by telling people, ask your doctor. They can sell us almost anything. The companies that make up the pharmaceutical industry are among the largest corporations in the world. In 2004, their combined global sales were over half a trillion dollars, with Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson leading the pack. Together, these businesses have come to be known as Big Pharma. In the U.S., the core of Big Pharma's immense profits is from sales of prescription medication. And since these drugs can only be prescribed by medical professionals, most of the industry's promotional and marketing activities are directed at doctors, pharmacists, and other health care providers. The companies of Big Pharma hope these campaigns will lead to new prescriptions for their brands. In recent years, Big Pharma has pushed its way into the traditional doctor-patient relationship and found a new way to increase sales by targeting patients directly and independently, largely through television advertising. Do you know about the purple pill called Nexium? I know. I know. You should know about it, too. Between 1996 and 2004, industry spending on direct-to-consumer advertising, or DTC, rose over 500%. Now, even before walking into their doctor's offices, patients have already been exposed to millions of dollars worth of persuasive advertising that encourages them to ask their doctor how a particular brand of drug might help them. Ask your doctor about adding Plavix. Ask your doctor if Zelnorm is right for you. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Viagra is right for you. I asked my doctor about Lipitor. Have you? In this new landscape, the most vital question for American consumers is this. How might the influence of one of the most powerful for-profit industries in the world affect the way we think about our health and well-being? With Celebrex, I will play the long version. Ask your doctor if Celebrex is right for you. As these pharmaceutical companies move prescription drugs into the consumer arena, as they become consumer products, um, they advertise them quite differently. And what they do is rely on all the same practices and conventions of conventional product advertising. It's so good to have my enthusiasm back. I'm enjoying things again. And it's because of Enro. They began trying to create brand identities for these products. What branding is about is trying to create an emotional bond between a consumer and a product, which is a very different kind of relationship than we've ever had to our medications before. Any doctor can tell you about patients that come in with a list of medications that they want. They clearly all came from advertisement that they see on TV. And you know, if you watch the evening news, for example, it's all uh, advertisement for prescription drugs. What's the weekend to hold in store for you? Ask your doctor if a free sample of prescription Cialis is right for you. The patients come in asking for things they don't even know what it's for, right? Women who are coming in asking for Cialis or Viagra or other things, and they don't even know what they're for. So this becomes not a rational reason for taking a medication. This is not so much about the efficacy of the drug, but about our emotional response to the kinds of social meanings they have attached to that product. Join the millions of people with asthma who have discovered Singulair. I just want to play. 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 You have these ads that are sort of ephemeral kind of images unfolding before you. 
And to me, they seem like perfume ads or sort of something that's all about image, that's all about emotional impact. Most of what you get in these ads are these incredibly compelling lifestyle portraits of people who are living healthy, vibrant lives thanks to pharmaceuticals. You don't really ever see the medical condition represented. You don't see people suffering from the ailment that they supposedly suffer from. You see them restored to health after they've taken the chemical. The pleasing tones and images of these ads are often at odds with the less pleasurable list of side effects that companies by law are required to recite. Side effects include itching, rash, diarrhea, and bruising. Dry mouth, sweating, nausea. Headache, flu, runny nose, and ear infection. If you take Wellbutrin XL, there is a risk you may have a seizure. Erections lasting longer than four hours, though rare, require immediate medical help. So I think one of the things that gets misrepresented by these ads is the safety of the drugs. While you get the major statement about risks, you get an incomplete picture of the drugs. Uh, these drugs are not as safe or effective as the ads suggest they are. According to Otis Lee Elliott's cardiologist, it's not his high cholesterol that put him in the hospital, it's the medicine he took to lower it. Adverse drug reactions, reactions that happen even though the medication has been properly prescribed, are the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. In fact, each year in the United States, adverse drug reactions cause an estimated 100,000 deaths and approximately 1.5 million hospitalizations. The withdrawal of the popular painkiller Vioxx from the market is a salient example of the magnitude of this problem. Merck said today that data from a clinical trial found an increased risk for heart attack and stroke. The arthritis drug may have caused 160,000 heart attacks and strokes. 20 million Americans took Vioxx. Vioxx relieves arthritis pain. Often, some say, unnecessarily in response to advertising. Vioxx is a superb example of what happens when you overpromote a drug, uh, when doctors especially overprescribe a drug as a constant promotion and give it to people who it's not indicated for, who they could have been given very cheap older drugs, which would have been just work just as well and then because the drug is only out for a few years you then discover when it's used in lots and lots of people that it has side effects some of them fatal that that you didn't know about ask your doctor or pharmacist about Vioxx and in 2000 more money was spent promoting Vioxx than Anheuser-Busch spent promoting Budweiser than Pepsi-Cola spent promoting Pepsi I mean that's a lot of money the industry group Pharma defends direct-to-consumer drug ads, saying they educate the public and get patients to doctors for treatment. I almost feel sorry for people who try to defend the advertising as education because it's so preposterous. I mean, come on. You know, is it education when Nike, you know, advertises its shoes? Like, now you know how to, you know, cover up your feet and get from point A to point B. That is not what a 30-second television ad of beautiful people playing in the flowers does. Also, it's uh, self-evidently absurd to look to a company for impartial, critical education about a product it sells. The thing is, we're not talking about whether a patient is drinking one cola versus the other. I, I think very few people would care if their grandmother drank Pepsi because she was being diluted by the advertising, right? Or they just had better commercials. And I think because we're talking about patients' health, uh, that it's a very, very, very important issue. Based on the sheer number of drug ads on television, it would be natural to assume that the industry is constantly creating new and improved drugs. But we might also ask, are these new drugs really more effective than those already on the market? When the drug companies test their drugs and submit their evidence to the FDA to get approval, they don't have to compare the new drugs with old drugs to treat the same condition. They just have to compare their new drugs with a placebo a sugar pill, which means that all they are really showing is that the new drug is better than nothing. Due to lax government regulation, prescription drugs end up flooding the market. A powerful example of this new market saturation is the exploding number of allergy medications. 
Allergies used to take the fun out of games. Now, I'm cleared and clear. The most successful new drug in this class was Claritin, a blockbuster that earned more than $3 billion in its best year. Other companies strongly push their own prescription antihistamines in order to garner a piece of this lucrative allergy market. Yesterday, allergies took you out of it. Today, Allegra can help bring you back. You know about Allegra, but you should know about Allegra D. It just may be music to your ears. I looked at the last seven years, 1998 through 2004, and during those years...